1918, a salesman came into the dipping room of Johnson's Candy Company and showed a candy to one of the dippers, who said that it looked like a turtle. Johnson soon trademarked that name, and in 1923 changed their company name to Demetz, which is the name we still buy it under today. An off-replicated recipe, the name Turtles has gone the way of Jello and Post-it notes and being associated with all versions of the tasty treat. But today we take the original and put them up against a couple of hairs. Will the competition race to victory, or will Pecan and Caramel win the race? You tried it! Tried that. I'm Nick Novak on that pal. Chad Hancock. Howdy. Nick Geiger. Hello. Real quick, do you think so? You said that now the Turtles was the original name and then other stuff imitates it. Do you think like right. the famous Galapagos animal is also named after this snack? For sure. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. You mean it. the famous Demetz turtle? Right. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> Natural okay. Selection saw the candy. And then said <laughs> <laughs> and said let's make a creature <laughs> just looks, like that looks nothing like this candy but we'll give it the same name <laughs> that's also how the lion the lion got his name it's like oh it looks like a lion bar <laughs> right <laughs> so in another like in another million years or so the an actual turtle will look exactly like this candy mm-hmm. so be on the lookout <laughs> um so, <laughs> and in another million years, uh, the Hancock offspring line will look exactly like a Reese's cup. <laughs> <laughs> so, I took uh, me and my family went to a escape room recently, and um, I'm ten year old twin girls, and they had never been was it to called one. prison. Is that what it was called? Yes, it was Let's See Escape. Yeah, the, the <laughs> listeners don't know this, but Novak is currently recording from the escape room. He hasn't gotten yeah. out yet. <laughs> Not out. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's like starving to death. It's like uh, there's only a certain like shape that a creature can fit through, and so we have to live in this for a million years <laughs> until we evolve into a shape that can fit out through the bars. <laughs> So the, the my girls didn't understand how it worked when you went in and they like saw a picture of three people who could be the murderers on the wall and you have to find the clues for it. And yeah. they're like, let's let's find out about these three guys. And I'm like, that's not how it works. Just <laughs> <laughs> fucking look for number combinations. <laughs> like, like, the, canvassing what, the scene for interviews. Like, what you are describing is much more fun than what we are about to do. <laughs> They're like, well, that guy looks 5'11", so 5'1", 1". <laughs> no, not it. Um, so we go through the whole thing. They did good. They had fun. We got to the last clue, couldn't figure it out, and uh, did not make it out of the room. And the lady comes in and says, do you want to know what the last clue was? And we're like, yeah, sure. So you had to had to weigh these things on the scale, and then you had to subtract that number from this number in the papers. And I was like, she wanted I'm like, I could have been in here for fucking all day and not figured that out. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, I mean, some of the, it's just like random bizarre stuff. I think it would be a fun thing to make up, but definitely bizarre. And then I've re- all I could think about on the way home is what I really want to do is go back. Like when there's a different worker there days later, right. knowing every single clue <laughs> and like pretend that I'm just finding them out and be like, oh, yeah, let me see here. Uh, this has got to be 815. I see the 815. I'm just like figure the whole thing out in five minutes. Be like, oh, open this thing. Oh, here, open this one. Just one at a time. <laughs> oh, yeah, that guy does look 5'11. Okay. Oh, wait, that's not it. Demand, demand your money back. This was too simple. <laughs> Uh, which which one of these books up here would have a secret hiding place? This one looks good. Oh, there it is. There's the key. <laughs> right <in there. laughs> Just flying through it and come out in four minutes. Oh, it's yeah. too fucking easy. <laughs> I did an escape room maybe like two years ago with some folks from work. And it was definitely like we escaped with maybe 10 minutes to go in the hour or something like that. But it was one of those things where there was six of us and I for sure never would have 
done it. Like there was some clues that I figured out, like some of the more math based ones. But I remember one of them was like there was like a box with like um, holes in it, and you had to like smell. There was like different scents coming out of the, the boxes <laughs> that you had to use to like solve a puzzle. And wow. like I have, I have like a shitty sense of smell, so I'm like, all of these smell like box. Like I don't know what, <laughs> like what I'm supposed to be like cinnamon and fucking I don't know, whatever. So it smells like someone took a dump in it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like that? Well, so sure? fortunately, we had like other people who were able to figure it out. And there was another one that was like musical based, right? Like involved like being able to read musical notes, which I. For sure cannot do, like, I mean, I used to be able to do that in, like, third grade or whatever, but I can't remember the last time I read a sheet of music. You read sheet music in third grade? Oh, I was in, like, band, right? Oh, like, okay. I played trombone. Like half note years. and whole note and yeah, stuff like that. I yeah, so. right, right. Yeah. Mostly, like, I, 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 I played trombone for a couple years because I wanted to play the instrument that lets you go, like, like, I was like, <laughs> that was really That's cool. What it, was. <laughs> <laughs> it was down to a trombone or slide whistle, and you picked trombone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're playing some, like, great Mozart number, and they're right to the end. Do, do, do. <laughs> fucking Hancock. <laughs> uh, yeah, we did an escape room for work, like a team building thing, and it was it was funny only because the people involved. So, like, we went there and they had this super sarcastic lady that was like our like person that helped us through it, and like we all had to like put like nicknames on a tag and give ourselves a team name. And my boss at the time, the guy who set it up, was being like real, like, <laughs> like joking about everything. And so, literally, halfway through, she stops writing down the names and he made some other terrible, like, joke to her. And she looked up and she goes, So you're one of them. And just kept writing. And I started cracking up. <laughs> and they went inside and, like, it was a zombie escape room. So you go into the room and there, it's the same thing that Novak described where these arcane clues that you're supposed to somehow know, like, Oh, well, the third book from the left had a W on it, which means West. So you go to the West side of the room and you weigh, you know, the scales and then you stand around, you fart in a box. Yeah, obviously. Chad smells it and reads sheet music or whatever. So (laughs) there was a big bureau at the end and no one had gone in. So I'm like, "Eh." I just walked up and opened it up. And this lady is inside, chained up dressed like a zombie like with makeup and stuff and she goes ah she comes like staggering out I'm like, I'm she's like not out. part of the escape room it's just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. she's like oh, myrtle never made it out of the room <laughs> yeah, yeah. so she like the the premise now now that she's loose is that every like 10 minutes more chain comes out so she can reach us and like if she touches you you're like dead and have to go in the corner of the room and like the rest of the, you can't help anyone like with the rest of the clues. And I <laughs> just, oh, that's just fun. staring in the fucking corner with like a dunce cap on or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so wait, you, you opened it and let her out and she touched you like two minutes into no, the No, she thing, didn't touch like... me. Like, you could tell like, you open it and she just kind of like, ah, oh, like she couldn't reach me. Also, but you touched her and that was the problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, sir? I was like, yeah, now you're dead. She's like, I wish I was. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> We made her up to look on a train. <laughs> yeah, I'm like taking my shirt off. She's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, catch me. No, but like she, she like this poor woman is like having to like so for the next almost like 45 minutes to an hour just rah, and she's like rolling around <laughs> on the ground trying to catch our ankles. And wow, like, this poor. This is your job. Like you can't get another job. Like this is what you gotta do. Like, is that what you said to her? Yeah, that's. I just fun, stood o- I just stood over. <laughs> You piece of shit, get a real job. Um, and she's like, "Sir, why do you smell like the feces box? You haven't gotten that far yet." <laughs> yeah. So we're like, we hadn't gotten anywhere. Like we're all like, because you're like sprinting around trying to find clues and dodge her. So like people are like, like leaping over her to get to the other <laughs> side of the room and stuff. Please tell me she like had to go to the bathroom and gave you a clue. She's like, "I gotta pee. It's five one eight. It's the key." To that <laughs> well, the the lady, the other lady that was like the the you know, like administering it, like definitely like she looked at me and she like looked down at the carpet and kicked the cord of the carpet and it flipped up. And there was clearly like a piece of paper in there. And I looked down <laughs> and she looks at me and just slowly nods her head. So, and I come over again and she goes, this is taking too long. <laughs> so, so later, like we got, I don't know, we got like three fourths of the way through and it was done. And she, she's like, gives us our evaluation. She's like, well, some of you did good. You guys figured that thing out. And 
you were really good at picking up at my clues. And she pointed at me. I was like, yeah, I just waited for you to tell me something. And then she's like, um, but uh, actually you all failed because what we actually forgot to do was lock the doors. You could have just left. I was like, oh, whoops, I guess I never <laughs> checked that. But. What kind of dickhead does that in an <laughs> yeah. escape room? You didn't lock the door, I'm leaving. Oh. Paid you $100, now I'm out. <laughs> The zombie's like, fuck, I got all this makeup on. <laughs> you forgot to lock the door. Now take my picture and put it up on the fucking wall of champions. <laughs> wall of champions. I would have won anyway. I knew that box smelled like a half note. It didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then they arrested me for assaulting that zombie. But it was <laughs> overall uh, kind of weird, but it was sort of fun. We just did um like a couple weeks ago. We they they set up like a virtual escape room at my company, which was like everybody yeah. jumps on like a you know like a video chat or whatever, and then the guy like sends you to a web page that he's created, and then um you know there's like clues on the web page, and it leads you to like another web page, and it's like <laughs> whole thing, and everybody's like trying to figure it out on like the video chat or whatever, and he's just like watching the whole time, like you know like taking notes or whatever. And so, so we escape and then, uh, at the <laughs> quote unquote, and then at the very end, he's like giving us notes and he's like, all right, so this was interesting. So, you know, the first three clues you, you solved, uh, very quickly. It was, it was quite impressive. Now the fourth clue, you were a lot slower than many other teams that have done this. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, why are you fucking bagging on us? Dude? Like, <laughs> Now, we had another one. Of, they, they tried to do one this week, actually, the same thing. It was like, but they did it through our company. And they, <laughs> did, a, did a zombie come up on Zoom? <laughs> <laughs> zombie was on Zoom. Uh. Uh, and I was like, nice. I took my shirt off. And like, you again. <laughs> no, it was like, uh, it was, uh, it was, it was, it was kind of lame, too, because they tried to turn it in. It was a company-sponsored one. So it was a, a z- escape room slash, like, security training so it was about like email <laughs> phishing and stuff oh my so, god like, and it was like click on the correct url of a legit email for the next clue i'm like fuck you guys taking and, all uh, the fun out of it like whatever little fun yeah. there is out of the, a virtual escape room completely <laughs> the, zapped out with that. the best part of all of it is after like a clue and a half the server crashed so we couldn't even access <laughs> any of the sites I was like, well, really sorry about this. It doesn't work. It was like someone trying to do, it was like a Sherlock Holmes theme, but our my company is German based. And so it was like people with German accents trying to do Sherlock Holmes voice. It was actually pretty hilarious. <laughs> Elementary, my dear Watson. I, that was terrible. That's not German. That's fucking Transylvanian. But yeah. I feel like the server crashing five minutes in is like the virtual escape room equivalent of the door being unlocked. Like, <laughs> I've had good luck. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to see the Zoom list of like 10 faces on there and then uh, there's a zombie and it just says zombie written underneath them. <laughs> like is their name. <laughs> And then there's one that just says box of shit. <laughs> and then there's one with like a guy with a pipe and it just says German Sherlock. <laughs> He's smoking a bratwurst. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, let's get into the snacks here. We've got three snacks. We're going to rate them on a five point scale. I love dat, like dat, indifferent to dat, dislike dat, and hate dat. Let's start with the Kit Kat this time around. Uh, this is the Kit Kat duos, and I have started to see commercials for these uh, in advertisements. There are a number of different varieties. This one is a Kit Kat duos mocha and chocolate crisp wafers in mocha cream with coffee bits and chocolate. I have seen a mint one as well, and I know there's a few of them. Yeah, I got this one specifically. I saw this and I thought of you, Geiger. Yeah. Um, like, I feel like this was something that you would like. It smells very mocha if you smell the top. The top half is like sort of a much lighter uh, box of shit color versus mm. <laughs> like the dark is the normal traditional chocolate color. Because it's kind of like working in a haunted house, right? That you, if you're stuck as a zombie, the whole, because those people are probably sitting there pretending the whole time. But it's a little less awkward because the people are just sitting there much less scared than they would be. In real life, yeah, like trying to work through clues while you make zombie. Yeah, it's like someone doing a crossword puzzle while you roll around on the floor and moan. It's kind of weird. Like, yeah. also, <laughs> like if, if I hadn't gone and opened the cabinet right away, like if none of us had touched the cabinet, she'd been sitting in a dark cabinet with chains on for an hour, 
she just <laughs> falls out suffocated from no way. <laughs> do, yeah, do you think they have like some entertainment in there? Like there's like a like a TV in there or something that she gets to watch until you open the door and she's like, damn it, we were just to like the uh, the contest episode of Seinfeld when you open the door, asshole, or something like that. Yeah, it's like, it goes quiet and you can just hear like the Curb Your Enthusiasm music coming from us inside the cabinet. It's a sub, it's just like some like 60-year-old man like reading a paper and you're like, oh, oh, give me a minute here. Oh. Yep, yeah. Hola. Uh, <laughs> gotta pull up I'm my a, pants. Sorry, I was taking a dump. <laughs> Prepping the box for the next group. <laughs> <laughs> the entire escape room experience is the box is full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> now, what clue can you detect from this one? <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> what fruit do you take notes of in this feces? <laughs> Cranberry? <laughs> Here's a clue. I eat lots of corn. <laughs> this lock is four letters. Anyone four letter word from this room? <laughs> yeah, I got an idea. <laughs> Poop. Wrong. <laughs> it was shit. <laughs> he called the shit Poop. <laughs> Um, okay, so Geiger, what do you think of this Kit Kat duo? <laughs> let's, talk about, let's talk about food talk for about 30 food, seconds basically. of this fucking podcast. Um, yeah. <laughs> quick, 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 so we can get back to the yes, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Anyway, like that. Okay, so I took a shit in a box, right? Um, <laughs> I think it's tasty. Uh, Chad is right. This is up my alley. Uh, kind of coffee flavored chocolate uh, candy. Uh, Kit Kats are a very middle of the road uh, candy for me. They're fine. I don't think they're outstanding, but these are good. Um, I think it's like, it's got little coffee bits in it as well, which you can really taste. I don't think the mocha is what I'm getting the most flavor from. Although it does have kind of a creamy, almost like a coffee with cream flavor on the top, but you can really taste the little bits of coffee, especially in the aftertaste, which I like. Um, and uh, it's got chocolate. I, I think this is really good. Um, it's a strong like that for me. Not a love, but this is tasty. I'm imagining I'm probably alone on that island, but uh, for now, it'll it'll start with a like. What do you think, Chad? I will say the coffee is not as strong as I was sort of expecting. And it's more of like a creamy coffee where some of these coffee, like coffee nut M&Ms or something like that, it it really hits you with that coffee, I feel like. Um, But this one's a little more milky, which is not so bad. The aftertaste does suck. uh, I will say that. But uh, I don't hate them like I kind of thought I would. So, and there's enough of that Kit Kat chocolate there, and the wafer is still pretty good. So I'm just going to give them a dislike. I agree with what you said. The coffee is not strong, which is a huge plus. Um, it's even, it does smell like coffee if you put it right up to your nose. But if it was put in a box and the holes were not that big, <laughs> then I probably wouldn't be able to identify this. You just right up, you're like, <laughs> Kit Kat duos, I'm an escape room genius. <laughs> The minute you start smelling it, I'm like, here comes the box joke. Here's the box. In three, two, one. Anyways, a box. Uh, <laughs> so I actually, you know, half of this thing, surprisingly, I would never buy it. Now, the fact that I'm going to give it an indifferent to that is yeah. really a plus That's an for this thing. endorsement from you. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, because I expected to dislike it. So if you do like coffee... Um, I think you'll be in the same boat as Geiger and you yeah. would really like this. So even though it's getting um, sort of a, a middling score, um, if you're a coffee lover, you, you, I think you should give it a shot. Um, so the next one, I don't. what is the official name of this thing? <sighs> I think Yoki? it's Yoki the... Uvochi Pocaca, which uh, is Portuguese <laughs> for like I, you, and Pocaca. <laughs> I don't know what the <laughs> third word is in Portuguese. I don't even know where you see those words on here. It's right there on the front. No, mine doesn't say that. Oh, what does yours say? Yeah, mine doesn't say that at all. Oh, then I guess that's not the name of it. Ours both say, and we translated ours through. Oh, that's what you Google. were texting. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, I would trade you this candy for a smile. Okay, let me uh, translate what mine says before. Uh, then maybe it's just called Yoki. Yoki's for sure the, and the, but it does say the Paco Quinha. De Amendium at the bottom. What does it say? Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, the code. Windium. You're going to need that to get out. Okay. <laughs> so, so mine mine says I plus U plus peanut candy equals heart, heart, heart. Hmm. <laughs> so. What's the little thing on bottom say? 
the part at the bottom of the package. Paco Quina de Amendium. Mm-hmm. Very yeah. <laughs> this is Google Translate the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> How do you say, excuse me, sir, I'm not interested in you in zombie on the uh, <laughs> Google Translate? Little peanut butter. Little peanut little butter. Peanut, well, let's little we'll call it little butter. peanut butter. So, Yoki little peanut butter. So, what it is is basically a, a small rectangle um, of... Ooh, it does have a peanut butter feel to it, Ooh. but breaks apart pretty easily. At first glance, it reminds me of some of those peanut candies we've had in the past, but maybe a little more stable. You know, a lot of those, like we would take them and they would just like disintegrate immediately. It's got a good peanut butter flavor to it. Like it's yeah. stronger, like saltier than some of the others. It's better than the other ones we've had yeah. of this. For sure. It's still going to be tough. It is, It's as much as it does stay together more, it still does break pretty easily. And it's very salty. Yeah, but it doesn't it doesn't just disintegrate into powder like some of the other ones did. Right. Right. What do you think, Chad? This is really good. This is really really good peanut butter. The problem is is that just peanut butter by itself, right? Oh man, I really wish this thing was coated in chocolate. Um, but <laughs> I think this is really really tasty actually. This is good peanut butter. It's not too sweet. It's nice and salty. Mm, going back and forth. I think I'm going to give him a love dad. I think it's wow. pretty good. Ooh. I think it's pretty wow. good. Ooh. I was right there, borderline love to like. I don't know. Maybe it's a high level like, but I'm just in a generous mood today. I think I am going to just barely squeak it into the lowest level of love dads. Wow. Whew. I'm <laughs> very far off from you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what there is to love about the thing, honestly. I do like the actual bits of peanut that are throughout that give it a little bit of a crunch mm-hmm. um, without that i think i would probably be in the dislike zone i i didn't even eat the whole thing and i already don't want to go back for more because it's too one note um, like you said it it needs chocolate or something the peanut butter's fine i was debating between a dislike and an indifferent i'm gonna go with an indifferent to dap because the flavor's good um i could eat it but uh, it doesn't not not blowing my socks off like it was for Chad. So I'm going to switch it back to high level like because I'm thinking about it. And it's like, even if I saw this in the store, I wasn't going to like rush to buy it, I think. But I do still really like it. But I'm going to switch to a like. Greg, what do you think of a little peanut butter? I think it is tasty. I, I mean, I'm not surprised Chad liked it, especially given how much Chad likes peanut butter. Um, I am kind of surprised it was a love only because it or originally at least because it's it is just peanut butter, but it, it's a really, like I said before, I think of these type of like compressed peanut or peanut butter snacks, this is clearly the best one. It's got a little bit of moisture that at least keeps it like Chad was saying a little more composed rather than like breaking apart in the minute we, we put it in our mouth. And like the problem with those other ones, but they were so dry, this one isn't, and it's got really good and it, there's enough salt in it. It's not just like a super sweet peanut. I'd say it's a solid like that. I like it. Um, I wouldn't go love, but I mean, it, it, it is good. I, I think it's, I ate the whole thing. Granted, it was like the size of a small, like eraser. It's not really difficult to eat, but um, no, it was good. Two likes and an indifferent little peanut butter out in the lead. So it is segment time. Guy here, what do you got? Yeah, well, we already ate the Kit Kat Duos. Um, so we can't do that again for the segment. <laughs> so no, our uh, segment <laughs> is, we're eating another one. Look under your chairs. <laughs> <laughs> Look at escape room. Uh, it's escape room. Okay, hold on. Now, <laughs> guys, I forgot to prepare the segment. The segment is <laughs> turtles. Let's eat the turtles. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's the segment. It's escape room. Now, I'm going to send you six fraudulent emails. You figure out which one. <laughs> okay, so no, we ate the Kit Kat duo. So I thought let's explore a little bit what some of the best duos uh, amongst various genres. Uh, there are, and we will have a mini duos tournament. Okay. So All right. I will, uh, I have four different brackets. I will run them through you guys. And then if there is a tie, like you each pick one or the other, then I'll, I'll break the tie. So we will start with the food bracket because we are a food podcast. Clearly we spent at least five minutes of this. So how many duos are in time. this thing total? How many duos are you going to make me count? And how many individuals? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's just four brackets with four teams each, so we, we can do this quickly. So I 16 think. duos or 16 <laughs> individuals? I'm not doing math. I don't know what you want me to say. 
So this will take us <laughs> longer than the escape room. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, food bracket. <laughs> First one, a couple of classics here. Mac and cheese mm-hmm. and versus peanut butter and jelly. I see. I get so, it now. Duos. Yeah. You get it now? What was confusing before? <laughs> what the fuck is a duos? What is a duos? What is a what duo? It's two p. It's like two things. I got That's it now. Pe- I yeah. got it. I got it. Mac and cheese. Right. So the individuals are mac, and the other individual is cheese. I'm not doing math. You're not doing understanding of what duo is. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. You're> not- <laughs> Get this thing on the fucking tracks. I Get it started. Your question. <laughs> fucking answer. <laughs> Chad, you go first. I mean, we know uh, what mac and cheese. Yeah. Easy mac and cheese. I, I love mac and cheese. One I of don't my top think it's easy. Foods. I think it is very easy. I know you like PB and J, so that's why I, I love peanut cheese. butter and jelly. I do. Uh, I love them both. I love peanut butter and jelly. I could eat it all the time. I think it's perfect together. But mac and cheese, I will. I'm actually going to go mac and cheese. All soon. right. Mac and cheese advances. Anyway. Were I to chime in, I might have gone PB and J only because mac and cheese makes me shit my pants. All right. Yeah. But you did rank mac and cheese higher it, way back in our Mount Maricamore with Great. the podcast, Chris. How the fuck do you remember that? Okay. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, cool. I don't remember if I, I could have ate mac and cheese yesterday and not remembered. I'm glad that you've got such a good memory. Uh, all right. The second half of the bracket, another couple of American classics, bacon and eggs. Or burger and fries. Oh, easy. Burger and fries. I don't think it's a ca- bacon and eggs is great. I'm down not for bad. Bacon and eggs, not bad. Bacon and eggs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it can't be burger and fries. No, for sure. So? Burger and fries, the best. I probably would have voted ba- bacon and eggs. I eat bacon and eggs a that's lot a, more than I do that's burger a bullshit and fries. Answer. I'm not a huge burger guy. I think I've said that before. Also a bullshit answer. I eat a lot of breakfast eggs, <laughs> but I actually don't eat a lot of a lot of bacon. And it's not that I don't like bacon. I do like bacon a lot, but like sometimes it can just be too much. Yeah. You know. But I will never turn down a burger and fries. Do you put bacon on your burger typically? Sometimes. Sometimes, but not always. You're a hypocrite. You know who <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> you could put egg on a burger. My yeah, I put I love putting a egg on egg on a burger. It's great. Scrambled eggs? No. <laughs> I know. Poached. Poached. Everyone knows poached. poached. Yeah, yeah. Hard boiled <laughs> egg. Everyone knows that. All right. Uh, okay. So to close out the food bracket, then it is mac and cheese versus burger and fries. Okay. Now that one's hard. Yeah, I know. I figured. It's not hard. Oh, wow. Burger and fries is is unbeatable uh, with this pair here. So it's so it's a perfect combination. You can't have one without the other burger and fries. Well, Ooh. I know. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, you can. You get a onion ring. Burger and fries. <laughs> I am gonna. I'm gonna put mac and cheese and like Geiger break the tie here. Okay. Ooh. Well, again, I stated yeah. it already. Mac and cheese is delicious, but burger and fries is not gonna make me blast shit all over my pants. So right. burger and fries. <laughs> this. Get to the fucking toilet. Make it to the toilet. <laughs> well, why? Does that to be on what? your pants. Well, okay, but if I could eat something that doesn't make me sprint to the toilet like a zombie <laughs> escaping a room. Okay. <laughs> the next duo, keeping with this theme, toilet and plunger. <laughs> <laughs> Shit and pants. <laughs> All right. Shit and box. <laughs> Shit and box. Oh, easy. All right. Moving on, we've got uh, kids characters. So, first matchup, Ren and Stimpy versus Itchy and Scratchy. I never understood the appeal of Ren and Stimpy, I'm going to be honest. I might lose me some fans. I never really found them funny. It just felt more manic and weird for the sake of weird. Itchy and Scratchy is a classic, so Itchy and Scratchy. Um, I do understand the appeal of Ren and Stimpy. It's great. It's a great classic cartoon. It's hilarious. But Simpsons is a, my favorite show of all time, so uh, Ren, uh, Itchy and Scratchy. Okay. I, truth be told, have never seen Ren and Stimpy, like not one That does time. not surprise me, yeah. because you weren't even allowed to watch fucking He-Man. Right. <laughs> so I'm not sure what. <laughs> Classic combo, Andy Griffith and uh, whatever the fuck the Andy Griffith show. All I could watch, guys. Uh, <laughs> Bewitched and the Bewitched guy. I don't fucking know. Uh, I realize the witch from Bewitched is not named Bewitched. No one yeah, it's right the only that. show you could watch where you couldn't think of two characters. <laughs> Andy Griffith. Andy Griffith and did he have the a dog? <laughs> uh, George Jetson and other Jetson. Now, um, 
<laughs> the only thing I know from Ren and Stimpy is the kids at school would constantly sing Don't Whiz on the Electric Fence, which I assume is a big mm-hmm. joke from that show. But that's all I know of it. So Constantly? Well, for the time period after it came out, I, I wouldn't say until mm-hmm. we graduated. That, that's but. the other strike against Ren and Stimpy was it It led to a lot of like annoying kids over quoting it. But you can't really over quote Itchy and Scratchy because it's just like <laughs> bonk it with mallet or whatever. <laughs> Says three guys beating the same joke into the turf. Two hundred <laughs> straight episodes. Uh, uh, all right. Bottom half of the kids' characters bracket. Classic combo of Ernie and Bert, or if you are a knockoff yeah. costume store, Bernie and Earl, <laughs> uh, and SpongeBob and Patrick. <sighs> SpongeBob and Patrick. I think if I had been born in that generation, I could have liked SpongeBob because I think it's a little bit funny. Yeah. Like it's you know some of the jokes are not all just kids jokes. Yeah. Um, whereas Bert and Ernie don't really tell jokes at all. <laughs> um, but in fact, Bert just seems like an asshole. Bert is an asshole. He's Bert is an asshole. It's great. <laughs> yes. Um, remember we used to talk about, this was my, if I had gone to the entertainment industry, I was going to, I had one pitch in mind. It was to pitch a show called Bert where it was like a Frasier type show. He was the only puppet. He like moved to New York city (laughs) and he had human friends and like a human girlfriend and stuff. And he just, you know, he had his pigeons and bottle cap collection and stuff, but he, so it's, it was a, a spin-off with just him as the only puppet. Was it a sitcom? Was it funny? Or was it just like him? Yeah. Okay. It was know. like a 30-minute sitcom, right? <laughs> it wasn't like CSI Bird or something where he was like <laughs> <laughs> solving crimes or something. <laughs> I will second Bert and Ernie. I, yeah, I think I'm too old for SpongeBob, but I also don't think SpongeBob is very funny. And plus, people have made a lot of like um, videos where they cut Bert and Ernie clips singing to like uh gangster rap songs like uh, regulate yes. and annie up and stuff and yeah, those are great. hilarious yeah. the bert so. nerdy annie up video <laughs> it's is, so funny it was my <laughs> top 10 youtube videos i've pretty ever awesome seen. yeah <laughs> uh, i will admit i have seen such little of spongebob and patrick that i i literally as i, I was like looking through like great duos on the internet and was researching and i just quickly wrote it down and i realized i had written down SpongeBob and SquarePants, which are <laughs> the same guy. <laughs> so, so, caught that one. All right. We're going to move on to another uh, set of classic TV duos, but this one not necessarily. Uh, Wait, we didn't we pick the. Finals oh, okay. Of that? Yes. Let's finish that off. So, uh, Itchy and Scratchy versus Bert and Ernie. Itchy and Scratchy. I'm going to go Bert and Ernie because Ooh, wow. uh, I'll probably start showing Bert and er- or Sesame Street stuff to my daughter soon. So. That, that gives so what? The edge. You'll eventually show a Mitchie and Scratchy too, right? Right. Uh, maybe mm-hmm. I don't know. She's... Yeah. Oh my god, my kids love Simpsons now. Oh, okay, I was wondering if like kids these days are going to be like, oh, Simpsons is so old or whatever, you know, like it's for old people. <laughs> yeah, unlike Bert and Ernie, Bert and Ernie, hip and happening. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> well, you wait when you said showing Bert and Ernie, you were just showing the Annie Up video, then then that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's exactly right. <laughs> she loves it. <laughs> It's also in her top 10 YouTube videos. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only one she's seen. So. It's number one. <laughs> it's number one through 10. <laughs> um, I, will, I will say I've seen a lot more Bert and Ernie in my day. That was one of the approved shows on the list. Uh, Bert and Ernie even beats out classic duos like Andy Griffith and drunk guy in the jail. <laughs> but uh, but I will. Bewitched guy. Bewitched guy. A show about a female genie. <laughs> Male from Bewitched. Female Cla- Bewitched wife. Classic um, duos such as SpongeBob and SquarePants and Andy and Griffith. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I will take Itchy and Scratchy. Wait, what did you take? I'll take Itchy and Scratchy. So okay, all right. So we'll we'll leave that half of the bracket. We'll come. We'll go to the other half. And we'll <laughs> Wait the till final Itchy and Scratchy takes on Burger and Fries. <laughs> <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. All right, we're going to move on to more adult classic TV duos now. Not necessarily. Oh, really? Well, that's not true. <laughs> adult, actually, adult <laughs> that made it sound weird. Peter yeah. North <laughs> and <laughs> Button Dong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so destroyer and manhandler. <laughs> this is they're not necessarily adult. Now that I've read the list too, so never mind. Back that up. Uh, all right, uh, 
So from the more adult scenarios like pencil and eraser. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, From the X Files, you have Mulder and Scully, classic Uh TV duo, and Statler and Waldorf. Waldorf from the Muppets. Mm. I think this one's kind of easy. Famous adult. (laughs) Right. I realized as soon as I said that. I I never I never loved uh, X Files. I think it's fine. It's a little too much mystery box for me, but. Uh, Statler and Waldorf are probably the two funniest Muppets or up there. So yep. I'm going to go with them. Yeah. I mean, we're going to sound like children for this. Uh, I just never was into X-Files. I couldn't get into it. Maybe I would like it if I had, but um, I did like the Muppets quite a bit. I'm going to double that. Was um, was Laura a big X-Files fan? Because I know she likes Duchovny, yes, right? She yeah. loves David Duchovny. And it was from many years of watching uh, X-Files. Yeah, my wife loves X Files too. Yeah, I had a couple friends like in high school that were literally obsessed with it, like obsessed to the point of like people got obsessed with Lost and Game of Thrones, but um, never got into it myself. I would also say Statler and Waldorf. Why can't I say Waldorf quickly? Statler and Waldorf. (laughs) I think they're uh, very very funny. All right, the other half of the bracket, classic adult (laughs) matchup of Fred and Barney Flintstone, our good old friends. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> only this for adults best adult <laughs> only for of. adults <laughs> um in beavis and butthead another yeah. highly adult <laughs> well they are kind of adult <laughs> subject matter i guess yeah so two assholes in beavis and butthead oh <laughs> yeah Tournament. this is like four four complete pieces of shit all against <laughs> <Yeah>. each other <laughs> fred and barney as we know are both dicks right we yeah. learned that fred's yeah. fred's an ass and and Barney also is for <laughs> reasons, but Beavis and Butthead suffer more from that Ren and Stimpy issue, correct? Um, than uh, Ren and Stimpy did because yeah. people imitating Beavis and Butthead was out of control. Yeah, I actually think they're funnier now to go back and see than they were when I was a teen. Um, and like I think after other Mike Judge stuff came out. I maybe could appreciate it a little bit more. Um, so I'm actually, I hate to say it, I'm going to take Fred and Barney, actually. Ooh, wow. casting a vote. Black as frying pans right there. That was yeah, this, awful. Uh, this is like damned if you do, damned if you don't. I, yeah. I'm i sure if I went back and watched Beavis and Butthead, I'd find some funny stuff. But yeah, the kids that quoted it, it was like so much of just the butthead laugh, like actually became people's laughs, like their natural laughs, which was so annoying to me. And so many fucking kids talking about how Vivid Grey Cornholio was horrible. Yeah. But yeah. I'm sure I would at least <laughs> laugh once if I watched their entire catalog. If I watch the entire Flintstones catalog, I'm not laughing a single fucking time. So <laughs> I will take <laughs> <laughs> right. But, Ooh. but uh, to be fair to a lot of those kids, I, I think some of them did need TP for their bunghole. So, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, <laughs> What's it going to do? Gagger? I, what are you going to yabba dabba do here? So, <laughs> um, I am going to light this tournament on <laughs> fire. Uh, <laughs> that was terrible. That was the worst. Is that one of the famous lines? Beaver. Fire? I, well, it didn't yeah, be this. Yeah, he had a pyro phase. Yeah. Phase. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you went through a pyro phase. Really nuanced two. show about a man coming to grips with his adolescence. Episodes 10 to 15. <laughs> <laughs> and then he got into heroin. No, um, I think Chad described it perfectly, is that, yes, the Beavis and Butthead kids in high school were obnoxious, um, but... It at least made me like when I saw it at the time, it made me laugh a few times. I think if I watched it now, I would at least laugh. Uh, Fred and Barney are like devoid of laughter. I don't know how anyone laughed at that show ever. So I will definitely take B and B, BB some butthead. As it doesn't matter. They're now. losing to Waldorf and Stan- yeah, they are up <laughs> against Statler and Ward. Yeah. Wal- Waldorf. <laughs> Fucking fuck. Why can't I say Waldorf quickly? <laughs> Let's push them through just so good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> they're not even that great. I, they are funny. They're a funny No, pair. they're the best duo if they win. Best duo well, ever. Well, look, they're, they're, be- they're fu- like, but they only went up against shit no. in yeah. their bracket. <laughs> yeah. But they're just like a kind of a throwaway, like, two dudes who just rag on people random. They're not even in much of the show. Well, okay, fine. I, well, I looked up, like, TV duos was like, 
two guys from Sanford and Son. I could think it was Sanford and the Son. I'm not sure. <laughs> and I was like, and I'm like, I don't fucking know who these people are. <laughs> it was Sanford and his son. I don't know what show they're from. <laughs> I don't know his son's name. <laughs> Wait, so are you going to vote Beavis and Butthead then, Le- Is that what you're saying? Laverne and Shirley, like the lame. No, I'm not voting for Beavis and Butthead. But okay. I, I just think... When you're looking for more, uh, the bracket called more adult duos. <laughs> well, <I laughs> featured yeah. three, car- <laughs> two cartoon characters and two puppets. <laughs> All right, adult duos. It's, it's Taylor Waldorf versus the Crank Yankers guys. No, right? <laughs> it was Mulder and Scully versus puppets and, and animated characters. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Who is it? Who is your favorite adult like from a sitcom or television show duo? Is there someone you can think of? That's is what I mean. Like I don't know. John Snow and you know yeah. somebody or like Jerry and Kramer or something like or, you know. Yeah, some of, some of the I actually loved good. Perfect Strangers. I don't know if you guys ever watched it. I almost I picked it. them as one of them. I didn't think I was worried that you guys maybe didn't watch it because I I, I ran those dudes to the oh. finals. I, I love Belky and Larry. I never, I never watched. Yeah. It. Balky and Larry. I thought it was too niche of a show. That's why I didn't pick it. But I love those guys. I, yeah, I thought mm-hmm. about like uh, there's a lot of suggestions around like uh, Laverne and Shirley or like Jack and Kate from Lost. But I'm like, yeah, I'm not really nah. Jack and Kate fans or whatever. But anyway, OK. Yeah, I would have picked uh, I would have picked Julia and Suzanne Sugarbaker from Designing Women. <laughs> <laughs> you do love that you show. You like that show a lot. <laughs> 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 All right. Now we're going to move on to the adult. No, there's no, no more as adults. Uh, it is a wild card region where we just put throw up anything versus anything. Here we go. Now, this is a, 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 a commonly referenced classic duo, Batman and Robin. Everyone knows Batman uh-huh. and Robin versus another commonly paired duo, Ketchup and Mustard. So, <laughs> <laughs> co- classic matchup. What do you guys think? Would you, would you enjoy Batman and Robin more or do you enjoy Ketchup and Mustard? All right. So here's what I'll say. I d- Oh, go. I don't like ketchup or mustard. I don't like either of them. Really? But I also don't like Robin. And Batman, I'm just a little batman out at this point. Uh, but because I do love the Dark Knight movie so much, I'm going to go Batman and Robin. All right. All right. Um, I don't like Batman and Robin. <laughs> I, <don't, laughs> no? I know some people. I, I like the, the newer Christopher Nolan movies, and I right. like the old Tim Burton movies fine. I could give two shits about him as a superhero or the comic or anything. Yeah. We have a friend who fucking oh loves Batman. <laughs> um, and <laughs> he would, he's obsessed with Batman. Um, I just don't care that much about him, even about superheroes in general. But I'm Novak, just, he's like, the okay. world's greatest detective. <laughs> <laughs> I remember he gave me a graphic novel to read and I got, I read it in like a day or two and I hit, t- returned it to him. He was like, you're done already? I'm like, a fucking comic book. What are we gonna find? <laughs> like two words on each panel. I mean, no, I, you were t- supposed to come on every single panel. <laughs> None of these pages are stuck together. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't even think he's the world's greatest detective. I think German Holmes is much much better. <laughs> Sherman Holmes, <laughs> Helmut Holmes is much better. <laughs> <laughs> I I actually like ketchup and mustard a lot. I put them on uh, burgers, which is another part of this tournament. So I'm going ketchup and mustard. All right. So we got to break a tie. I, I will admit I do like Batman a fair amount. Not nearly as much as our other friend. I could get over that the cowl doesn't perfectly shape his fucking face or whatever his other goddamn problems were. But um, <laughs> our, our friend's problems, not Batman's, to be clear. Uh, but uh, I will take Batman and Robin over ketchup and mustard. Are yeah, ketchup and mustard are quality staples of any kitchen. I like them both. I I want them on hot dogs, but which I I, I know is also something terrible to say in Chicago, I guess. But fuck all you. And I like them too. Yeah. All right, you with me? Okay. And this last matchup. Okay, this is a, a key one in the, the entire battle here. So you've got nature's most natural pairing: cock and balls. <laughs> Versus, this <laughs> covers his face in shame. Oh, don't be embarrassed. <laughs> You're talking about like roosters and tennis balls, right? <laughs> yes, the most yes, nature's very <laughs> Those roosters that come out holding <laughs> tennis balls. <laughs> roosters famously love tennis. <laughs> <laughs> Rakar, dirty love. 
<laughs> Thirty love. <laughs> they 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 call like chickens and also can talk in tennis scores. The score is thirty love. <laughs> All right. No, I meant penises and testicles, though. Just be clear. Okay. 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 Cock and balls and absolutely anything on anyone on the planet, plus international icon and sitcom star Alf. So. <laughs> Cock and balls or Alf plus X. You can pick. What do you think? Do I have to fill it in with something? No. You, know, you just got to. The just strength Alf of Alf with should anything? be enough, my friend. Alf. Or cock Alf and balls. Mis- mystery <laughs> partner. Okay. So what if it's Alf and just balls? Alf and <laughs> Sanford. <laughs> no son. <laughs> that was like the fourth most famous duo. That crossover episode they had. All right. I'm going to fill in the X and I'm going to vote. Alf and German Holmes. That's what German, I'm All right. All right. No back. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not voting cock and balls. I'm not even... <laughs> all right. Uh, Alf and Sanford. Looks like uh, you guys agree with me. Alf is great. All right. That's clear. Oh, my God. They're... This is the worst. I'm going to pair this guy. Like, it's Batman and Robin. <laughs> Batman and Robin and Alf. What do you got? <laughs> when has Robin been portrayed well like never when Probably. was there a robin someone's like yeah that robin kicks ass like nobody i'm right? sure in the comics there's been a good robin because there's been a million robins but technically like joseph gordon levitt was robin in the third nolan yeah. movie and he was doing right, robin stuff yeah yeah one of the right, robins man. got beat to death with a crowbar i think <laughs> i'm serious uh they i read some <laughs> article about it like the 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 comic book writers let the fans vote if Robin should die or not, and they all did. So Joker beat the shit out of him with a crowbar and he died. Wow. Yeah. So uh oh, I'm sorry, I take that back. Sanford beat him to death with a crowbar. That leads right into my next into the next round. Uh-huh. I'm not voting for Babin around. I'm voting for Alf and Crowbar. <laughs> Alf and Crowbar. <laughs> Chad. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I don't. Do I vote for Batman and Robin, or do I vote for Alf and Robin? I'm going to go <laughs> vote for Batman and Robin. All right. So wait, we have one vote for each. Yeah. Yeah. Do I pick Batman and Robin, or I stay on brand with my terrible choke? <laughs> <laughs> or do you want something that's not a duo to win the duo? <laughs> Uh, all right, yeah, I'll take Batman and Robin. Okay, so fi- so Batman and Robin. I, I also say Batman and Robin because Batman and Robin is such a ubiquitous duo that even like sports teams constantly refer to like they've got their Batman, they need their like their Robin. Like the second best player is always re- referred. They to are the, the dynamic Robin. duo, actually. Right, like they're literally in the name. It's in the name. Mm-hmm. So all right, now let's go back to our uh, other half. It is time for burger and fries versus itchy and scratchy. Just what you thought you'd be doing today. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, okay, this is easy for me. I'll go burger and fries. I ate a burger as recently as yesterday and fries. I did love The Simpsons growing up, but I have not watched The Simpsons in 15 years, probably. So, Wouldn't you also say, though, that you were itchy as recently as yesterday? <laughs> I'm scratchy that itchy right now. <laughs> I love The Simpsons, but itchy and scratchy is not the best part of The Simpsons no. by a long shot. No. Um, Poochie so is. I was many, <laughs> there's many other duos, duos from the Simpsons. I'd be picking easy. Well, who would right? you quickly yeah. as, like pick as a duo? Lenny and Carl. Yeah. Lenny and Carl's a great one, but again, they're not, I don't know, you know, even like, Homer and Marge. I'll tell Homer, you. Homer but, like, and Bart. I thought about Homer and Bart, but they're really not referred to as a duo. You know what I mean? Like there's yeah. two characters. Bart and Sideshow Bob, I guess. Yeah. Or Krusty mm. and Sideshow Bob, maybe. Lisa and Michael Jackson that one time. <laughs> oh okay um all right so we got one vote each or is, or no 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 okay. i'm saying they're not the best so i'm taking burger gotcha. and fries burger to and the finals. fries all right will burger and fries face off with the dynamic duo itself or will it face off with two old muppets <laughs> say their names <laughs> Stetler, which muppets are those statler and delia <laughs> <laughs> statler and waldorf uh, versus Batman and I'll go first Robin. because um, ah, I just I can't <laughs> I'm going to push Batman around to the finals here um, I do wonder where he gets those wonderful toys but I'm not going to put him into the finals so I'm going Statler and Waldorf okay. yeah same Statler right. and Waldorf way more entertaining than Batman and Robin alright guys this is a huge momentous decision from, from there on here there on here fucking A 
Uh, (laughs) (laughs) From there on here, I'm fucking hammered. Uh, This will be known as the greatest duo to ever grace the earth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be burger and fries or Statler and Waldorf? I fucking did it. Nailed it. Chad, go ahead. Okay. I do love a burger and fries. But I think it would be funnier yes. if Statler and Waldorf won. So I'm going Statler and Waldorf. <laughs> no, Meg shaking his head. <laughs> Plus, I want to keep. I want to keep making Geiger say Waldorf. <laughs> Statler and Waldorf have some funny comments, right? Mm-hmm. That's true. They sure do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have good lines. Funny I'm comments not say all they over don't. the place. But they've got maybe one to two lines per movie slash episode of The Muppet Show. They are, they're funny, but they're very like side character burger and fries. If you are a piece of shit like me, who gives no care for his health, a big part of my life. Right. So I'm (laughs) taking, you can do many different things with burger and fries. Burger and fries is a much better combo than Statler and Waldorf. Now, Geiger picked the opposite. So I could be angry. (laughs) I mean, burger and fries uh, never made you laugh. Not once. No. And <laughs> now what if it was burger and Waldorf salad? No. Um, <laughs> yeah. I Look. I What if it was burger and fries for Statler and Wald Alf? <laughs> <laughs> what if it's Gand Alf and Wald Alf? Uh, <laughs> all right. Look, I like a good burger and fries. I really oh do. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I really, truly do like... Yeah. Burger and fries. However, but nobody pick. Nobody leads by explaining <laughs> the one they're gonna pick first. <laughs> However, I really like burger and fries. <laughs> Slam dunk burger and fries. <laughs> Here's my th- reasoning. Now, burger and fries are good, and that's why I picked them. Now, uh, <laughs> I would. I am sometimes prone. In fact, more often than not, will get if uh, if you give me an option between a good onion ring and a good fry, I'll take a good onion ring. Wow. Notice onion ring. Is one of the fucking options. Burgers are good. If there's a great chicken sandwich there, great fish sandwich, great anything else, I'll probably get that. Yeah. What I won't do is replace uh-huh. two hilarious old men <laughs> oh my in my muffins. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> if you could, let's say the rest of your life, you could. You have to take one of these things out of your life for the rest of your life. You are going to take burger and fries out of your life before these two fucking muffins. <laughs> no, I can't even tell you the last time I saw Statler and Waller. I'd live just fine without him. Well, fuck it. I don't want to like. You hear, well, the other thing is though that would be good for your health. <laughs> but fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> but that would be good for your health to take out burger and fries, right? A doctor would recommend that. What doctor would recommend depriving yourself of Statler and Waldorf? Uh, no, <laughs> probably Doctor Bunsen Honeydew. I'm gonna guess. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's my fucking tournament. I think yeah. burger and fries are fantastic, and I would much rather have them in my life. I could, but I think it's hilarious. That we could now declare the best duo of all time. Uh, 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 uh. Uh-uh. I was lying. I just wanted to hear you defend them. I'm actually voting burger and fries. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Are you serious? Yeah. No! <laughs> oh. oh, man. Oh. Well. <laughs> well. Uh, all right. Bonus I hated, bracket. I hated, to, I, uh, I hated to bitch on them because I actually really liked the Muppets. I loved them growing up. Uh-huh. Um, Doesn't sound like it. I know. That's no, why I, I felt know. bad ragging on them. But they just weren't even the best part of the Muppets. Just like Edgy and Scratchy weren't the best part of the Simpsons. All right. Well. Yeah, I do like Swedish Chef a lot. Well, right, yeah. but Swedish Chef and what? The lobster that he throws in the pot? There's no duo yeah. there, Chad. <laughs> All right. Well, burger Swedish fries. Swedish Chef and me. Boomerang Fish Guy. <laughs> <laughs> Louis? Uh, all right. So, burger and fries, I guess, is the winner of the, uh, <laughs> of the duo tournament. Wow. Uh, but grudgingly. <laughs> all these great options, we wind up with fucking burger and fries. Come on. Great options. <laughs> All these adult you options. fucking oh. Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> there was no... And sh- Alf and Blank. Okay. <laughs> Maybe they were chose more for, for humor purposes than they were for scientific reasons. <laughs> this tournament featured neither Sanford nor Sun, so this is on you. <laughs> All right, let's... Um, uh, little Peanut Butter's in the lead, 
uh, what Turtles, which was the star of the show, has got a chance to beat it. So Turtles, of course, many people probably had them. Uh, now, I've actually, I feel like they're called Turtles other places, but if it's not this company, they're not called that. So a lot of times they'll, I looked at other varieties and they're called like pecan clusters and things yeah. like that. Um, so it is a caramel nut cluster. It's got pecans. It's got caramel. Looks exactly like a turtle that you would find in nature. <laughs> I don't know if I've had this these before. You've never had a turtle? Well, I don't eat a lot of nut stuff, like, generally. I don't know if I really even taste pecans. I mean, I see that they're in there, but, like, the caramel is, like, yeah. the dominant flavor, I feel like. Yeah, because I don't love pecans on their own. Right. Um, but, yeah, this the taste of, of the nuts in here is not making me dislike it. All right, I'm up first. A turtle is a salad snack. I'm not going to go to a store and seek out turtles because there's slightly better versions where the turtle doesn't offer anything new. Um, you know, it's it's little Snickers in performance with its nut and its caramel and chocolate. Um, it's salad. And I like I said, don't like pecans, but it doesn't stop me from liking this. It's not a perfect snack. I'll, I can go to it. Um, if it's at a party, someone handed it to me, I'd eat it. I'm going to give this a mid-level like that. Um, Geiger, what do you think? You love pecans, right, Geiger? I do like pecans a lot. I do think Chad hit. Like, the, the fact that I like pecans is kind of moot, though, because Chad's correct in that, that you don't taste them. It's mostly just, you taste caramel. Yeah. Caramel and chocolate's still a good mix. And then the nuts at least give it a little crunch. I guess you could call me the master of disguise, because I'm not too turtly for the turtle club. <laughs> I think uh, I have to reference no one will fucking get. I got it. I appreciated it. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm going to be the master of disguise. <laughs> I saw that movie, and it's the only line I remember from it. I think you might be the only person who saw it. Um, I was the only person in the theater. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it was like second weekend it was out or something. <laughs> you were the master of disguise. You were disguising yourself in a was, crowd of people. It was the premiere. It was you and Dana Carvey. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Myers did it show up. Oh, wait, is he in it? Mike Myers? No, I don't think oh, so. Oh, it was just Dana Carvey, the master of disguise. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I, I it's fine. I'm, I'm torn between an indifferent and a like. I like it. Fine. I wish there was a little less caramel, a little more like that the, the pecan had something to do with it. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's good. Uh, so a low level like that for me. Three likes today for me, I guess. But um, maybe I'm just in a giving mood. But I'm going to eat the third one. So that's pretty good. But your favorite here is the Kit Kat, right? Um, From today? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Here's where we stand. Um, a Little Peanut Butter had two likes and an indifferent. And Turtles currently has two likes, which means um, if Chad is just feeling so-so about this, we could have a tie. Uh, but if he's wavering one way or the other, that's going to decide the match. Chad? Well, it is it is interesting because I don't understand why the pe pecans are in here. Like, you don't even taste them. There's not even really enough in there to provide texture. The caramel just dominates. It comes at you. And, like, you compared it to a Snickers, Novak, and the Snickers has, you can feel the peanut. You can, you get, it's got the nougat in there, right? There's other stuff. Like, this might as well just be a Milky Way. For, for a weirdly shaped Milky Way, right? Like, it's only caramel. It's too much caramel. And the caramel's fine. It's not, like, a disgusting caramel like some of the other stuff we've tried. But, like, that's all I taste. And it seems very pointless to me. Um, it's not offensive. But this is going to end up just getting an indifferent to that for me. So we do have a tie here. Wow. Fuck me sideways. The fact that you guys <laughs> could possibly pick... That peanut thing over a turtle is fucked. That is that is so fucked. I don't get that at I all. I gave them both if, likes. What are you talking to me for? If you're gonna reach for one of the two of these, you reach for that for little peanut butter. Really? No, I almost I, gave it a love. I don't oh, know. Wow. I would say probably of the three, I would rank them Kit Kat turtle peanut thing. But mm. um, I do think the peanut thing was really good. I love peanut butter, and it was like tasty. It tasted like peanut butter. So we do have a tie, yeah. and Geiger, you were the one who gave two likes, and you slightly gave two edge to Turtles. So yeah. if it went to OT, Turtles would get the win. But uh, a couple of things that we can give overall positive scores to that we would recommend. So a pretty decent episode. I actually wasn't expecting that um, when we got these snacks. So yeah. Geiger, where can listeners contact us? Uh, if you'll enjoy Kit Kat duos, if you enjoy Statler and Waldorf, uh, and think that they're clearly a better option than burger and fries. 
Um, if you've escaped an escape room or if you're still stuck in one, listening to a podcast in a closet, waiting for someone to find you as a zombie, uh, you can give us a re- reach. Give us a reach. That's people. That's a social media thing, right? Give our cock and balls a reach. <laughs> <laughs> like if you're around and want to reach. Uh, uh, give us a listen, a like, subscribe. That famous duo of reaching and around. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a trombone, let's say it's rusty. Um... <laughs> You can get a hold of us at you try that at gmail.com. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Is that me or the trombone in that scenario? Uh, you can uh, get a hold of us at you try that at gmail.com. Uh, we're on YouTube, we're on Instagram, we are on Facebook, you tried that. We have a uh, Twitter handle, hashtag you tried that. Uh, please let us know what you think. Suggest snacks for the podcast. Tell us if we are right or wrong in our ratings. Leave a question for the mailbag. And as always, thanks for listening. Now, Chad did play uh, an instrument back in third grade and we learned about notes. But Geiger, you are you are the longest instrument playing of us all. Yes. Right. Yep. Um, and what is your what master level of saxery did you reach? Oh, man, I was a sax master. I can't say it any other way. <laughs> I was, uh, Kenny Loggins learned from me. No, um, <laughs> I played Kenny Loggins play the sax. You think Kenny? about Kenny G? You're right. I was. <laughs> 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 Gary Loggins is the top gun guy, right? <laughs> Kenny G. The G stands for log in. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> Famous duo, Kenny Loggins and a sax. <laughs> Remember that top gun song? Like, ah, wait, and then wicked sax solo came in the middle. <laughs> uh, but, um, no. If you had to pick up a sax today, how Oh, how would that poor, go? poor. So I... I played from like seventh grade all the way through my junior or college, I think. And I actually stopped when I had uh, my surgery. I think I've talked about before, but part of my lip is numb from a surgery. You played through junior or college? I knew you by then. I know. Were you just like, you went to your room and sat, quietly played the sax? <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's me. Yeah, no, uh, look. You'd be I, walking down the street and just every time you turned your back, you'd just hear this. <laughs> and then, like, flip back around. He's like, what, what, nothing. Yeah, I was like constantly uh, either playing gigs or getting laid. Right, all right. So I'm sorry. So I'd be trying to sleep and I would hear Baker Street like playing. Out <laughs> <in> the... <laughs> I was actually, I played a lot. Um, I played the uh, instrumental for Sax Man with Jack Black. <laughs> Beep. Um, but uh, no, I, I stopped playing because my lip was numb. And so I think I actually picked it up again uh, when we were filming something uh, like, a, mm. like a, a movie with each other. And I had to play saxophone for some reason or let Dave play it or something like that. Yeah, my brother played and it. And yeah. I, I tried to play some and I had forgotten. I could do the mouth part still. I And I could read the music a little bit. I just forgot some of the fingerings. I I, bet, I still have my sax somewhere. I bet you I could play something. I could I could reteach myself, but it's been a while. And Chad, you did you did not play uh, instrument, but your your uh, voice was an instrument because you were a, a theater man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I pl- well, I played the trombone for three years in band, and then I quit and joined the choir for one year, which was sixth grade, and then I had a terrible singing voice, so <laughs> I left that, and then, yeah, joined, joined the theater, where <laughs> <laughs> with my naturally loud voice just projecting everywhere. Did you play Kenny G in the Kenny Loggins story? Is that what I heard? <laughs> <laughs> Danger Zone, my life is Kenny Loggins. <laughs> I remember because I remember in Sound of Music I played Nazi Number Two and I had one line where I just ran up on stage and went. And like, <laughs> I that one Nazi have a trombone. <laughs> no, it's just from my mouth. Oh, <laughs> you also played Nazi Number Two in uh, the German Home Story, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was I was always cast as a Nazi. I don't know why. <laughs> what was it? What was the joke we had about Nazi number two? And the... <laughs> there's some F weird. Joke. I like it was that I rewrote. You can cut this out. I just don't. Yeah, remember. I was that I I rewrote it to like so that Maria von Trapp married Nazi number two. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, go listen to that episode. It's really funny. <laughs> Probably better than this better one. than this one. So. <laughs> All right. Well, that'll do it for this time. We'll be back next time when we try not three brand new things. Yep. Yep.